Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You lived in sin, following the ruler of the evil powers of the unseen world, who is still at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. We all at one time lived this way, We sought to please ourselves, and we did everything our bodies and minds wanted. We should have suffered God's anger because of our sin, just like the rest of the world. But God is extremely merciful and loves us unconditionally. So when we were spiritually dead because of our sin, He gave us new life with Christ. It is only by God's grace that we are saved. He raised us up from the dead along with Christ Jesus and gave us a seat with Him in the heavens. From now on, God can display His grace by being kind to us in Christ Jesus. God saved you by His grace when you believed, and you cannot take credit for this, because it is a gift from God. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Merry Christmas. That was awesome. It's Christmas Eve. I mean, it feels like we're living in the Bahamas, but it's Christmas Eve. Isn't that awesome? Merry Christmas. I want to ask you a very simple question tonight. Will you receive... The gift of Jesus? Will you receive the gift of Jesus? My name is Rob Wilton. I serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church, and I want to welcome you to a vintage Christmas. How about let's start a new tradition in New Orleans and have this every year right here? What y'all think? And so we've already booked it for next Christmas Eve, so make plans. We'll be back here next Christmas Eve. We'll be up in the balcony next year. And my name is Rob Wilton. I I serve as the lead pastor. I could tell you a lot of things about my life. I could tell you my full name. My full name is Robert Edwin John Wilton. Thank you, Mama, who's in the house tonight. I'm named after both of my grandpa. Yeah, give it up for Mama. There's my Mama right there. I love my Mama. My, My dad's here too, but I'm a Mama's boy, straight up. I could, I could tell you about my, my family. Um, my entire family's from South Africa. They moved as missionaries to America right here in New Orleans in 1979. I was born right off of Napoleon Avenue, a Baptist hospital, in 1981. Spent my childhood and middle school growing up here. And then I went up to South Carolina. So this is how I explain myself to people. I'm a Cajun African-American redneck. So I could tell you a lot of things about myself. I could tell you about my beautiful wife. We've been married 11 years. I could tell you about my four kids, Bolt, Mac, and Burke. We named them real easy, one-syllable yelling names because I knew I was going to yell at them a lot. And then we've got a little princess. Her name's Carolina McCall, and this daddy says her full name every single time. And I could tell you a lot about myself. I could tell you about our amazing church our church that was started here in New Orleans seven years ago. My wife and I started a Bible study off Magazine Street in 2007, 2008. And it's been an amazing ride of God's grace from that moment till today. I could tell you a lot about things. But can I tell you what's most important and what's the greatest thing that I could ever share with you about? It's the fact that I love Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I want to ask you this question again. Will you receive the gift of Jesus? I want you to know God's creation. God created the heavens and the earth. And he said that it was beautiful and good. There was peace and there was shalom. In the beginning was God. But I also want you to understand our condition. Mankind's condition. God created Our earthly parents, Adam and Eve, and our earthly parents sinned against God. They disobeyed God. And because of that sin, it says in God's word that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. 
But praise God, we don't have to stop with just our condition. I have news to share with you on this Christmas Eve in 2015, right here at the Jefferson Performing Arts Center, that there is God's provision. And God's provision came in the form of Jesus Christ. God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners, get this, Christ died for us. The story of Christmas, listen to me, the story of Christmas is not about us going to God. The story of Christmas is about God coming to us. And so it leads us to this final, very important point. It's our response. God's word says very clearly that in response to the fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It says, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And in order to receive the gift of Jesus, God's word says that you must confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. He is the gift of life. This Jesus who was born in a manger came to restore shalom, to restore peace, to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring love to you and I. Will you receive the love of Jesus, this amazing gift of Jesus? Before I got up, we were listening to a passage in God's word, Ephesians chapter 2. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Everybody say gift of God. God. So who loves getting gifts at Christmas? Anybody in the house? Mama, hope you brought presents. All right, so we love getting gifts. I I need some help uh, passing a a gift out today to you. Will y'all get up on your feet and give it up? For our New Orleans Saints starting quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback, Mr. Drew Brees. How's everybody doing? All right, Drew, so before we sit down, before we sit down. We got to pass out a gift here. I like that. Let's do it. And, and we want to see this accuracy with the boot and all. That's all right. Boot and all. I've got it. All right. So <laughs> have, we, have we signed the football? No, I was going to personalize it to whoever, uh, okay, whoever okay. wins all right. it. So, so we have a pretty huge basket of names here. No oh, pressure. Wow. Okay. Uh, rumor has it that the people here. who showed up early are down at the bottom. Are they? Okay. And so maybe we'll, we'll early, hook er- those people up. All right. All right. So we got a name. Let's see who this early bird is who crumpled up their, uh, their name. All right. You might have to help me with this. <laughs> Lolly. Lolly? Modica. M- Modica? Yes! No, no, stay there, Lolly. Wait, wait, Lolly, stay, you, stay there. You, stay there. You, here, I'm going to sign it for you, and then you're going to have to catch it. Do you want me to put Lolly on or just sign it or what? Oh, Do you yeah, want me to put your put name? Lolly. L O L L I. Yes, this is Lolly Modica. How cool is this, Lolly? Who that said he gonna be them saints? <laughs> All right, now we gotta see what kind of skills Lolly got. So, look, look, Lolly, there's Sid to the to, to her right, and and her son Michael to to the left of her. So to your right, which one do you want to pick? Because she's she's maybe maybe Michael. He's in our youth group. These students. Whoever puts their hands up first. Whoever puts their hands up first. All right, let's do this. That was awesome. He caught it six times. Oh. Well done. <laughs> well, does that count? Was that like that six That absolutely completions? counts, yes. Six for six I think on that one throw. I think you and uh, Colston's record right there. <laughs> With that Just one, one attempt. pass. Yes. Wow, that was unbelievable. Well, Drew, thank you so much for being here. Isn't it great that Drew would come out on Christmas Eve? spend some time with us. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Man, I've just loved uh, getting to know you, getting to partner with you in this city, uh, getting to serve alongside you as as, uh, together we both dream of seeing uh, the gospel of Jesus uh, lifted on high 
in every corner of our city and world. Absolutely. And so Vintage Church loves you. We pray for you. We, we are so excited uh, to continue to journey together in the future. Um, let's talk a little bit Christmas because I, I want to hear your, your, your story of coming to faith in Jesus. Um, both of us have some similarities at home right now. We have those three pet gorillas and then a princess. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Whenever the breeze and Wilton's go anywhere, we apologize when we right. leave. And it's so funny because we're, I mean, we're, we're almost on the identical path here, right? Yeah. My, my boys are six, five, three, and the baby girl is, is 16 months. Yeah. And she yeah. is the princess. There is no question. <laughs> and those other three are the little gorillas. <laughs> no, no, it's been a wide open awakening. Tell us a little bit about Christmas for you guys. Maybe some favorite things. Uh, talk a little bit about your family. Yeah. Um, so my wife, Brittany, and then, and then our, our four children. Um, you know, every year it gets more exciting. It gets more fun. Um, just to see, just throughout the Christmas season. I mean, the minute that Thanksgiving ends and, and they know that we're getting into the Christmas season, um, you know, it's, it's obviously talking about Santa and it's talking about all these things, but you know, it's, it's more so just the joy that you see them have and the excitement and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously not about the gifts. It's just about, it's about the togetherness and it's about the love. And I, you know, when, when we, when Brittany and I first, uh, were married and we talked about, you know, how many kids we wanted to have, she was kind of more in the, well, I think two is good. You know, let's just shoot for one of each and then let's, and I was like, you know, I feel like the more, the more kids you have, the more love you have in your house. And, and all I looked forward to were just those holidays. And I look forward to Christmas specifically, about having all your family in the house. And then as we get older and our kids go off and they get married and have kids of their own, just to be able to have that full household with all of that love, um, that's just something that we're going to cherish you know, forever as we get older. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited specifically about the gifts I'm giving to my little princess this year because... She couldn't really understand last year, so she's really amped up this year. Um, look, we, we uh, love um, not just the fact that, yes, you're a Hall of Fame quarterback, and, and uh, there's no doubt um, you've accomplished some great things uh, in your life on the field. Uh, but I think I can speak for every New Orleanian in this, in this room. Uh, we love your passion off the field. Uh, the very fact that, that even you're coming to New Orleans, you believe that God called you here. Absolutely. Uh, we've talked about that, that God called you here. And, and so your, your faith, your faith is a, is a central part of your life. Share with us about your experience of coming into a relationship with Jesus. Yes. Um, so I, I grew up in Austin, Texas. Um, uh, my, my parents were divorced. They got divorced uh, uh, when I was seven years old. And so my brother, who was two and a half years younger than I, kind of split time at both households. Um, my mother at, at the time did not go to church. My father remarried, and they were uh, members at the First Baptist Church of Austin, Texas. So every other weekend, we would go to the First Baptist Church. And to be honest with you, as a kid, you know, it was going to church maybe for the donuts and listening to the, to the cool stories at, at, at Bible study, right? Or, uh, uh, and, and, then, and then you'd get, we would kind of get into the, the, the main sermon, and it was just my brother and I just kind of, you know, slapping each other back and forth in the pew and not really paying very much attention. But um, as, as we got older, m both my brother and I were very much into sports. I mean, that's really what our lives revolved around was sports, sports, sports. We were sports junkies. And it's really what gave us such a close bond, you know, growing up and one in which we still have. But, um, you know, we just kind of lived and died sports. Well, um, I became the quarterback of my high school football team, and we were a very successful team. Well, Towards the end of my junior season, I actually tore my ACL, and uh, we were going into the fourth round of playoffs. We're probably the favorite to win state, and all of a sudden, everything I'd worked for, everything that I kind of felt like was wrapped up in my identity was stripped away from me. And I remember going through a really tough time there for about three or four weeks, and I remember it was on my 17th birthday. I'm sitting in that same pew right next to my brother, my dad, First Baptist Church in Austin, and I'm listening to the pastor talk about God looking for a few good men, his disciples, to carry on his word. And um, I, at that moment, just felt like Jesus reached into my chest and grabbed my heart and just seized hold of it. And, you know, at the time, again, like I said, I, there was a lot of ups and downs in my life because it was, you know, it was all about sports and it was the, the winning and losing of sports and it was all of a sudden I'm injured and then I'm in the tank and, you know, I think what I asked myself that day was, there's got to be a greater purpose for me in this life. It's not, it can't just be about, um, you know, what's, what's happening 
with my personal life, you know, whether my girlfriend broke up with me or whether, you know, um, I, I got hurt on the football field. So at that time, I think a great peace came over me because I knew that God had a great plan for me. He had a great purpose for me. And I think it, 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 it gave me great peace and understanding just to know that he was in control. And then if there ever were challenges or adversity that I faced in my life, it was there for a reason. It was God strengthening me, molding me into who he meant for me to be. And um, one of my favorite verses that I actually got from my teammate, our good friend Luke McCown, is Proverbs 16.9, uh, which says, A man's heart will make his plans, but the Lord will direct his steps. You know, the, God has given us all different talents, different abilities, um, and has led us in different directions in our life. Now, if it was up to us, our point A to B probably would have been different than, you know, than his point A to B. But bottom line is, he was getting us to that end point. It was just in a much different way than maybe we originally had planned because he needed us to be able to go through some of those things in order to develop us into the, the, the people, the family men, um, the community leaders uh, that we were meant to be. And at the end of the day, I think that that is now how I wrap up my identity. It's not as Drew Brees the football player or anything else. It's as Drew Brees the Christian man. Um, who's trying to do, you know, right by God and, and, and live my life um, in a very prayerful way, um, in a way that's uh, putting God first. Drew, thank you so much for sharing that. One of the things that, that we prayed about, even for this night, um, was the very thing that you just shared, um, believing that uh, possibly under God's great plan, uh, as he directs paths, um, that tonight could be that same night of salvation that you experienced, that I experienced at the age of seven. Um, and so maybe let's encourage people in that. Um, we want you to know that much like we shared uh, just earlier, that this Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. And so I asked you this question tonight, will you receive the gift of Jesus? Every head bowed and every eye closed in this moment right now. Uh, Drew and I would love nothing more than to celebrate with you tonight. If you are here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we want you to know that his plan for your life is centered upon receiving the gift of salvation. And I want you to know that tonight you can know that you know that you know that you're saved. So in this moment right now, this is between you and God. A pastor can't save you. Drew Brees can't save you. Your parents can't save you. Religion can't save you. Only Jesus saves. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ is here right now. I want you to know that salvation is here right now. And God's word says very simply that all you must do, it says for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so calling upon the name of the Lord, I don't want to pray a prayer for you right now because this is your prayer to God. Calling upon the Lord is just saying, you know what? Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. Jesus, I repent of my sin. And Jesus, I put my faith and trust in you. In a moment of silence right now, pray that prayer. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would say, Pastor Rob, tonight on Christmas Eve, I have received the gift of Jesus for the first time ever. And tonight, Jesus has become the Lord of my life. If that's you here tonight, would you just simply lift up your hand high in the air if you've prayed to receive. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? No one's looking around. Praise the Lord. I see hands going up all over. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? I see you way in the back. I love you. Anybody else? Salvation is here. Praise God. I see you, buddy. Love you so much. Thank you so much. Jesus loves you so much. Everyone can put their hands down. 
everyone can look at me right now. Hadn't it been awesome to have Drew here with us? Can we just thank Drew? Can, can I let you know this? That God's invitation is always. I know some of you right now, even in this moment, you still have questions. You, you still have doubts. Uh, there's still a bunch of things going through your mind. And I just want you to know that Jesus and his salvation invitation for your life is always. And so what I want to do as we kind of transition now is I, I want everybody, let's stand up together. And, and I just want to ask for Drew, if you wouldn't mind, just praying for us because we're going to sing to the Lord together. And, and we're going to seek the Lord together. And if any moment during this song or at any moment during this time of worship, and then we're going to close out. I know you guys got a lot of gifts to get to and food to get to. My wife made a pot of gumbo. I can't wait. I'm already smelling it right now. <laughs> and so uh, we, we've got a lot to do. But this is still a moment of salvation. And so we rejoice with those who have received Christ. We rejoice with those who will receive Christ. And in all things, we're going to give God glory and praise. So, Drew, will you pray Absolutely. for us and lead us into Absolutely. this time of worship? Lord, we thank you so much for your presence. We know that you are in this room right now, right this very second. Please be with every person in this room as they go through uh, the Christmas time, as they spend time with family, as they reflect on all the things in their life that they are so thankful for. Lord, may we never forget the reason for the season, and that is the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, who you brought to this Lord to die on the cross, or to this world to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, to give us life everlasting, and to save us all. Lord, may we take hold of you in our heart now and know that you are with us forever. Please bless this Christmas season. Please bless all those traveling in and out of town to be with family and to rejoice in your spirit. It is in your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen.